Should we wait for Ingrid or can we get started? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right, so let's get back to the meeting. So we're on public hearing item B. Consider introduction of ordinance 618 for zoning and general plan consistency to amend title 17 of the Brisbane Municipal Code to add the TC Southeast Bayshore Trade Commercial District and apply the TC2 to the zoning map and rezone the properties at 3745 to 3795 Bayshore Boulevard from M1 Manufacturing District to TC2 and rezone the adjacent city right-of-way property located at the on the west side of Bayshore Boulevard from M1 to OS Open Space. Um, yes, thank you. Honorable Mayor, members of the Council. 2015, the Council approved um, rezoning our text amendment in the M1 zone related to a request um, in the southeast Bay Bayshore area of the former VWR site, changing some of the permitted and conditional uses. At that point, the Council noted that the um, M1 uh, industrial had been deleted as a general plan category in the 1994 plan general plan and we're directed to eliminate the m1 zoning district title for consistency purposes and so the council adopted a resolution of intention directing the planning commission to consider that um, the commission has started that exercise they decided to approach the the different geographic areas that are zoned m1 differently because they all have different sort of characteristics so tonight's case is really limited to the the areas in southeast and southwest Bayshore that are uh, currently zoned M1. The area that is um, in southwest Bayshore uh, is actually excess city right away that shows in the general plan as open space. So the proposal is to uh, put that into the um, open space zoning district. Again, it's it's undevelopable property. It's public property, so, so no one's... Um, land use um, abilities are affected by doing that. Then the other area, Southeast Bayshore, which is zoned M1, proposal is to create a new TC2, um, Southeast Bayshore Trade Commercial District, and um, to apply that new uh, zoning district to the Southeast Bayshore area, um, and then amend the zoning map accordingly, so there'll be a new zoning map district uh, when this is done. Um, with that, I guess the only question was uh, this particular amendment uh, presumed that there would be provisions made for medical cannabis uses. So they're referenced in the actual permitted uses and conditional uses section of this text. Given the council's direction on that other case, we can certainly strike that language for now and not and we'll be silent as to whether you know medical cannabis business uses are permitted or not or, or we can leave the language as it is it's really up to the council's uh, pleasure um, with that staff is recommending the um, council introduce ordinance 618 i'll take any questions you have thank you questions i have none i don't have any either tara do you have any questions no real questions for staff but i am thankful that 
um, the st that staff is only referring to the southeast Bayshore area um, because that was one of the concerns that I had when we originally um, discussed this that we were including the industrial um, uh, avenue industrial avenue industrial way um, portion of that at the same time and it didn't seem cohesive to me so I'm glad that staff took that out and we're only addressing those issues okay, thank you we'll open it up to the public hearing is there anyone who would like to speak on this item okay motion close public hearing second all those in favor aye aye, aye. Are there any motions? Okay, a uh, motion to uh, introduce Ordinance 618, for Zoning and General Plan Consistency to amend Title 17 uh, of the Brisbane Municipal Code to add TC2 Southeast Bayshore Trade Commercial District and apply TC2 to the zoning map and rezone properties at 3745 and 3795 Bayshore Boulevard from M1 Manufacturing District to TC2 and rezone the adjacent city right-of-way property located on the west side of Bayshore from M1 to OS Open Space with staff proposed amendment eliminating the medical marijuana portion of it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, okay. I oh, I'm didn't quite realize we weren't going to have discussion. You just had questions for staff. Okay. That's fine. Sorry, I thought That's I had asked for a discussion. Or he just wanted to add a motion. Okay. Is there any discussion? Um, so I was wondering if the um, if this would have been considered. Um, we're just making this into um, compliance with our current zoning. Or was this more of an upzoning at the request of the of the property owners? No, this is a general plan consistency issue because there is no industrial land use designation. Okay. So the point was that we should eliminate industrial zoning to be more reflective of the actual general plan category. And and while that's so, sort of a separate issue, have we gotten any more reports from? those property owners about the toxicity reports and and what their um, what their findings were on the toxicity at that site because that was some of the concerns I had originally about um, yeah about um, one area has been remediated for allowing a tenant improvement there's another area that was still undergoing the testing that they haven't leased uh, we could do I could do some more research on that and report that back to the council informationally okay so uh, okay I'd appreciate that thank you uh, Terry just for um, excuse me just for uh, 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 take it back a little bit this is the one that um, former mayor Miller was really uh, always pushing staff on to get it updated to match general plan and no I understand I I, yeah. I know the reasonings and yeah and and so I just when we had talked about it originally we didn't have the information on the toxicity levels um, because the process was still under the sale mm -hmm. and so um, when we were talking about the permitted uses and adding food production and they were told or that it was under um, DTSC or or water I'm not sure if it was water board or or substance control um, review um, but that we didn't have a lot of control over that review process because it wasn't because it was a um, owner property owner initiated review so we did weren't getting updates from Department of Toxic or um, Water Resources Board. So I just was wondering when I've seen what looked like tenant improvements going on there, um, if we had ever gotten those reports mm. and whether changing it to some of the uses that are allowed are consistent with the toxicity level. 
so that was my concern was the toxicity level and and if we ever got a real finding on what was there so again I'll, I'll, I'll um, pull the information in terms of what was approved to support that original um, tenant improvement and the other area I'll check on the status of the soil and the um, site investigation that was last I checked was a while ago was still ongoing in terms of data collection on the yeah there was also two areas that uh, were on the some side. of the area was uh, having difficulty getting access, access because uh -huh. it was all along yes. the shoreline and the lagoon and I think some of that information mm -hmm. would be good to have because the lagoon is part of the baylands and so um, having that information I think would help us going down the road on on sure. what can be possible there and what shoreline improvements can be done Okay. So are we comfortable moving forward? With I'm, this? I'm fine moving forward with this. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? So okay. it was already called and Motion. everybody else all voted. Those in so. favor. Okay. And yourself? I'll, I'll aye. say aye. Okay. Aye. So okay. all those, so everyone's in favor. Delayed vote. <laughs> Delayed vote. <laughs> yes, I just. My apologies. Okay. So moving on to staff reports, city managers report on upcoming activities. No report tonight. Mayor right. Council Matters. Item A, schedule interviews for applicants to the Parks and Recreation Commission and complete streets and safety committee. I have a comment on this. Okay. I would propose waiting until we have applicants for planning commission. So it's just really hard, I think, for us to find days in general. If we could just, and that's a long one, if maybe we could just combine it <coughs> we're doing all three at once. Second. I agree. I think having the interviews all together makes sense. I also, you know, would like to bring up a discussion regarding complete streets, and this may not be for tonight, but I'm not sure if we're, we have to have it to receive certain funding, but it seems like it's that's kind of falling apart. But we have, do we have, like, enough applicants where that committee would be able to continue and is so what what work i guess is on their work plan and is that a work i you know i couldn't tell you off the top of my head okay. I, it, it it is i think primarily a committee that's not necessarily required by law to receive monies um but you know over the last few years they've been involved in a number of things and um i i would say just from history that you know some of these com committees, you know, they ebb and flow and it may be at a low point right now, but usually you get a couple new members on there and you get kind of a revitalized uh, sort of um, energy. So I, even though it's, way, you know, it's abated maybe a little bit at the moment, I think if you get a couple new people, you'll, you'll see it more active. So, point. so on the um, Park and Rec Commission, we have how many vacancies? One. One vacancy, and we've gotten how many applications? Um, or? Right now, there's four applic applications. Okay, and on the complete streets and safety, we have how many positions open? We have up to four, but they'll they'll need at least uh, just one to to be able to meet. So we need one to four, and we've had how many applications? Two applications. Two applications. Okay. Um, so would that, if we're going to be accepting planning commission um, or trying to schedule them all at the same time, I guess we're, do you want to add in um, discussing the vacancy? Vacancy yeah, let, on the planning commission. Yeah, let's incorporate item B in yeah. the discussion. Vacancy that's, on the that's what uh, Madison's suggestion is, is that you go out and, if we do we that, would we want to do planning commissioner and then interview everybody? And mm -hmm. if we do that, would we want to extend the open dates for uh, for applications for the park and rec and the complete streets at that same time idea. to be a concurrent? Yeah, yeah. Post yeah because we, we, we just mentioned it tonight. For complete right. streets. We just mentioned it tonight that, hey, if anyone's interested, we have an opening. So I think it makes sense to keep it open keep it open until it just have it consistent mm -hmm. have consistency and close it all at the same time yeah. and for planning commission would we 
we want to post the vacancy and keep the application period open for 30 days. Um, is that what we normally do? I think we generally try to get a, um, a cycle where we can get it into the star. So I'm not sure if we were too late for May or... Yeah, I mean, we could look at whatever that. works within mm -hmm. whenever yeah. we can get into the next okay. Yeah. yeah, but contact the folks who have applied. Yeah, at least okay. Let them know what the what the thinking is there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at the end, I'm like, boy. <laughs> yeah. So if we can get it into the uh, May star, then um, we could probably do the 30 day. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Two birds with one stone. And and right at this point, the planning commission is comfortable working with a four member commission for the time being. Great, thank you. I have a choice. Okay. okay, item C, countywide assignments, subcommittee reports. Anyone have anything to report on? A lot. It's been about a month, so. Yeah. I have uh, two, um, one with Madison and I and one with Cliff and I. And Madison's going to give an update on ours. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> Go ahead, Madison. Um, he actually gave me a warning when we met. He was like, you're going to do the update, so be ready. <laughs> so we met uh, regarding the history subcommittee. We called the meeting because we had received an email from uh, a resident who was really interested in being involved. So we're really excited to get this off the ground. We think it's important to kind of start forming the historical society, society advertising, getting volunteers um, interested and kind of handing it over to them so that when the library is ready, there's already a sh really core, strong group of people who are excited about um, developing programming for that room and that it just, you know, starts off with a bang. So it sounds like we already have one person interested, and I assume that uh, when we advertise, we'll get more people. I think the word is kind of spreading since we had our conversation about it a while back. Um, <coughs> is there anything I'm missing about it? It was just, it was a pretty brief meeting. Yeah, um, and it's coming back to to the council of what uh, the program would be. We promised that we'd come back, you know, with a, with a program. And uh, I think uh, Clay and uh, had met with the library staff, right? And, uh, uh -huh. and I think you put this in uh, one of your uh, uh, city manager updates, but... Uh, maybe reiterate you know where the county's at the county library system <coughs> in regards to uh community uh, historical rooms you know uh. yeah i mean this issue <coughs> excuse me has come up um in a number of cities that are in our jpa our joint powers agreement for the library services so the county librarian has said that she's going to put money into next year's budget to hire a consultant to kind of work on um the history room um, aspects of the libraries and provide some technical services to the various cities that are interested in pursuing that. So that money uh, should be available sometime, or that consultant should be on board sometime, I would imagine, you know, by fall. Uh, so so we're not the only library that uh, is looking at having that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, we also had last night. Oh, yes. Do you want... Do you want to do it? Sure, or? I'll talk about that. So we had our arts ad hoc subcommittee meeting with the Parks and Recreation subcommittee uh, where we interviewed um, four potential artists for public art at the library. And we were very impressed by the, the four finalists that we interviewed. Yeah. There were originally 25 applications, so we whittled it down to four. Three of them came in person. One was interviewed by phone, and... You know, some of them came from across the country. Um, and we were really impressed. Um, we made a recommendation, which will go to the Parks and Recreation Commission and then come to the council. Um, and we are very excited about the art that we proposed for the library. It was actually very in line with what we had envisioned before we even put out the request for proposals. So... I think one of the most exciting things about the artists that we chose is that the way that the art will be installed is um, directly related with the architecture of the building and feels like a piece of the building, not just an afterthought of something that's kind of been 
painted on the wall, so to speak. Right. So this, the artist that we chose, is is taking inspiration from the building that we have in our location and um, really creating something unique to the structure and obviously something unique to our community too. So I cannot wait to talk about this further with you guys because I think you're going to absolutely love it. We're so excited. Yeah, that's very cool. And the other artists that we spoke with, um, even though we may not have selected them, we already have them in mind for some potential future projects. Um, and there will be some additional funding coming into the public arts fund through the ordinance that we passed. So there will be other opportunities for public art throughout the town. So it was a, it was a great interview session. Yeah. Stay tuned. Yeah. Just to let you know, I've contacted the artist that you chose, and she's very excited. Good. Yes. Yes. <laughs> she seemed very excited to be here. So the... It, Sorry, I'm not up on the... So the artist you chose, now it goes to Park and Rec for approval or for the no. actual piece selection? For them to recommend to the council an artist. And and, and at this point, you know, we don't have um, you know, a proposal for what the exact piece of art will look like. You know, we had asked for some potential ideas um, but it, it's still, you know, the artists would still work with the community and come up with what the exact art will look like. Um, but we have a very good sense of, like, what her type of art is. She left us a sample. <laughs> so when she left us a sample. So when it comes to us, I'd be happy to have Stuart give me that sample so that I can show you. And really her... Um, her art takes into consideration the sun and light. And so she gave us flashlights and stuff so you could, you could um, interact with the piece to show what it might look like in different lighting scenarios and conditions. So I'd be happy she sh showed us how to do it. I'd be happy to demonstrate it. So you kind of have a sense. And we'll have, uh, I imagine we'll have pictures of her past work. So you guys can get a, really good idea of what it would look like and we did talk about something that we would like to see certain themes so I'm sure that when it comes back we we do have kind of a good sense of what we would like to see that we could describe to you at that time so but my question is is this artist has been chosen and so when it comes back to us for approval are we actually giving approval on it or has that approval already been no, it'll come given? back to us for approval is that Stuart do you it's want like to tentatively it? chosen hoping right. that so. you agree with us but I really it's think our we'll subcommittee agree. recommendation the, the, so the so the process at this point is that the ad hoc subcommittee of the parks recreation and council members uh, makes a recommendation to this to the parks and recreation commission and then the parks and recommendation recommend Parks and Recreation Commission makes a recommendation to the City Council as to who the artist should be. And the City Council, you know, is the final say as to who the artist should be. And um, I think what we'll probably do at this one is, there, Madison and Lori are correct, there are probably, we probably don't want to have the specific piece of art decided because I think that's part of the process is going to be working with the community on that but just to have an idea of what it is and then have the city council provide information as to what they think, you know, what might be appropriate. Um, and, you know, What's it's good, it's going to be, it's, it's a, she's done work throughout the country. She's done work in Canada. She has a um, installation going up in Reykjavik. So, you know, we actually got people who have national and international reputations. Yeah. And we, and picked, we reviewed and the references and they came right. back stellar. So, so, yeah, and we, you know, and I think it's going to be, uh, it's a, she does glass work hanging from the ceiling and it reflects and plays with the light and she specifically creates light for the building to make it be there all the time. Good. I'm, so. I'm a big fan of glass work, so. Yes. It's really. And she does it in, amazing. and she does it in the fashion of birds, plants, water, butterflies. So, I, you know. On the Chihuly design? Um, no, no, it, it's, well, like, uh, it's mean, as, as I said, you know, I've got a piece in my, I've got a piece in my office. If you, you know, at some point, if you want to stop by. 
Okay. I can show you. Great. I love the glass work that Chihuly's done and all the Earl stuff Earl at the Earl. Seattle Museum. It almost kind of looks like that when you see the whole piece <coughs> together. She has ones where it's like brain cells communicating. And within the brain cells, she puts a light. So the, the lights go off at different times. And then she has, so you can see that there's like thought. And that all together, that whole installation kind of looks like a little Chihuly. But she does a lot of work in hospitals, uh, schools, libraries, colleges. She's all over the place. And what's really great is that she makes it specifically for the site based on how the sun is going to travel in that area. Like she did one in Alaska and she knew how it was going to be on June 27th or something like that. So she's really, she plans it out. So it'll be great. It's very customized. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. This is pretty amazing. Um, and did you have anything further? Yeah, I had another one. Um, the Bayland subcommittee met. And Cliff, uh, you, you want to fill in on any part? Yeah, last I, time you asked me to do that. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, <laughs> no. I mean, I, any part? Let, let me finish. Any part that I don't hit on. Uh, Bill in, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, sure, Clark. Yeah, sorry, I, I know. <laughs> but you on a spot. Yeah. That one kind of went south. Um, so we met yesterday um, uh, with uh, Lloyd Zola and, and staff, and we were going over um, the logistics of uh, what our Bayland hearings, what we were going to propose, and also uh, the speaker series that we kind of agreed to uh, at one of our previous meetings. <clears throat> and uh, the thought was is it would have a group of speakers on a, on a Saturday, and this is mainly for, for the community. And of course, the council can attend, but it would be uh, numerous subjects like, you know, uh, sustainability, uh, water, you know, different different segments of what we're looking at on, on the Baylands. And it would be a panel that would do a presentation and then discussion and a Q&A from the citizens, you know, that uh, want to come up and ask questions and stuff like that. And it would be a two-part series. It would be morning uh, session and then an afternoon session. And I think uh, we'd probably provide sandwiches or something uh, in between, you know, have a, a break and provide food for the citizens that showed up. And then... Uh, um, you know, if we look at our revised doodle poll here, this, you know, it kind of looks like we're having three meetings in a week and that necessarily may not happen if we're able to make it, make through, uh, our Baylands hearings and stuff. And so the idea was, is that we want to set the speaker series up before we go into deliberation so that, you know, everybody kind of, you know, has more information and then, uh, and then on Thursday, uh, June fifteenth, would be the white paper presentation, and basically that would break down um, what the suggestion is of how we deliberate the Baylands, and it would be more of in a decision tree form, and how it would start out, you know, and um, delve from there. And so staff is gaining information on that, and then this doodle poll, this one here, is is for all the meetings that. We collectively, all five of us collectively agreed on that we're available. This doesn't mean that we're meeting on all these dates. So don't get freaked out. <laughs> you know, we would, you know, we kind of agreed to this and we, that I'm available this date and this date and this date and this date. So from there, we'll, we'll figure out, you know, where we're going. This is not saying that we're meeting all these days. Um, is that kind of sum it up, Cliff? Uh, yeah, it, it did. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, one of the things that, that was mentioned today um, in oral communications was, you know, all the questions that have been asked. And so, you know, how do we address those things? And so, um, you know, ha having some of the, the, the leaders and, you know, really in the world addressing some of these key issues to be able to come and, and speak before the community and before the council, um, it, you know, it would be helpful. So yeah, and, and and John, you could chime in here if I if I'm uh, leaving pieces out, if I could. But when we talked about you know answering questions, some of the questions <coughs> can 
can't really be answered until we establish a land use because some of them might not no longer be pertinent if we establish a land use uh, or land use decisions that you know some of those questions go away is that is that correct but the council might need to sort of triage those it questions and three, yeah. we'll try to help you know ones that seem to be very land use dependent so yeah. if, if the council wants to go that direction then those questions are relevant but if the council is not interested in that land use direction maybe those questions really are no longer relevant to the decision making yeah so kind of you know we're looking at you know trying to not overly complicate the process and start burrowing into things that that you know may not be pertinent you know we kind of come out with a direction and then we discuss <coughs> just exactly what we would be sending to the ballot and it kind of you know is really kind of dependent too upon what's approved from a land use perspective you know so mm -hmm. um Choose, yeah, but those are things we could dive certain into. Certain things, it could be, later. you know, general yeah. plan. It's, it is really, you know, the schedule. schedule. So yeah. we were looking at the 10th being the day of the um, the speakers coming to Brisbane. So it would be an all-day thing. Um, the 10th of? Of, of June. June. Did, everybody get did, did you get this paper here, Terry? Are we moving to that now, or are we going to finish up <coughs> reports, subcommittee reports? Huh? So, oh, you're, you're right. I guess we should uh, finish the. Uh, yeah, we can look at that when we get to item D, the okay. specifics of the calendar. Okay. Right. So let's finish up with the subcommittee reports. Um, well, that's what we discussed okay. on there. So. Okay, great. Okay. So, kind of dovetails into it. <laughs> okay, well. So I can't remember if we've given a report since Clark and I met on the water, sewer rates, and drought rates. Did we give a report since then? It seems like it's been a while since we had that meeting, and we're getting ready to have another meeting. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think we have. Huh? I, I can't. Re can't recall. Well You're going to have another one on May 10th. So about a month ago, more or less, Clark and I met on water and sewer rates and the loss of funding due to conservation, and how we were going to address that. And and I think. We got some ideas from staff and some uh, input from Clark and I. No decisions were made and no recommending, no true recommendations were made, but we did note that we were going to have to come back to um, the council with um, some rate adjustments to deal with the um, drought rates, drought rates yeah. and funding shortfalls in our sewer and water system because of the great job that everybody did conserving. Um, and so the lack of revenues and how we we're going to make that up. So we're going to be meeting again on the 10th um, to discuss that again. And also um, we uh, discussed the water and sewer master plans were presented to us. Yes. So we went through that in pretty good, pretty good detail, gave feedback to the consultants, and that'll be coming back to us in September, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I was looking at my calendar half to remember what yeah. meetings we had um, and then sort of as an ad hoc, um, Madison and I met with the airport noise group and got an yeah. overview, again that was about a month ago, um, got an, an overview and a, a somewhat of an education on, on what they're looking for and, and how we might address some of the noise issues. Um, and we're having another meeting on that um, this coming Monday with the public for the ad hoc noise group. And meanwhile, I attended but did not interact on the airport roundtable, which Cliff is still was still seated on that. So um, you'll be at the next meeting. I don't know. I haven't got confirmation of what's going on yet. So, but I, I will be there. I. I no, you, you'll be the city's representative at the next meeting. Okay. Yeah. yeah I also attended the uh, um, District Five uh, 
communities together that uh, David Canepa sponsored. It was right. quite, oh, quite, quite, a, quite, a, uh, quite a turnout. It was Jefferson, at Jefferson right? High School. Mm -hmm. uh, and it had uh, a lot of dignitaries, but uh, a lot of food and everything. Uh, it was it, it actually was a fun day. I took my grandkids and That's great. Um, very uh, ran into a lot of people I knew actually and from from old days and Senator Hill was there, Senator um, Weiner was there, um, also our assembly member. Uh, Great, Alan. yeah, excellent. A few other guys. All right. Uh, do you have anything to report on? We uh, we had our economic development mm -hmm. subcommittee meeting. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the ED meeting, we talked about um, uh, minimum wage, and that um, you know. There's the state minimum wage, and, and uh, the city of San Mateo has increased the minimum wage to something that is you know, more of a living wage because uh, it's more expensive in our county than, say, Turlock or you know, Wairica. So um, we've looked at some different options and um, plan to bring it to the council for further discussion uh, at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. in May. That's right. And we also had a presentation by Etheric Networks, which does um, high-speed broadband. And they seemed interested in our community. They're based in the South Bay. Um, and we talked about the potential for getting high-speed broadband uh, service in Crocker Park um, to businesses. Um, so, and, and the potential of, you know, having service provided to Brisbane residents. So I don't know, has staff been communicating with them? Yeah, we met with them earlier this week. Okay, great. So moving forward. Um, <coughs> so on Peninsula Clean Energy, we had a board meeting probably about a, almost a month ago as well. And they're actually having their board meeting tonight, but we sent a staff person. <laughs> um, we've now launched fully but the county, you know, the whole county is now on Peninsula Clean Energy. Um, you've probably seen some of the marketing campaign materials around the county on bus depots and on the 101 on billboards. Um, well, I have to check my next bill because I wasn't yeah. on PG&E before. So oh yeah. So, but I did find out that if you upgrade to Echo 100. Uh, which is the 100% renewable energy um, option, which I, I did, and I hope other people do as well. That the, that the city will give you an LED flashlight that says Peninsula Clean Energy on it as a as a token of appreciation. So, if you do do that, be sure to come to City Hall with a copy of your bill. Um, you know, I, I had a couple of other things. Yeah. Um, so we had a heart board meeting uh, yesterday. Uh, the heart is having their um, annual fundraising event at Devil's Canyon Brewery. Uh, it's going to be on May 11th at 6 o'clock, and it's a great event and a nice way to support uh, affordable housing and, um, you know, have a couple beers, too. Uh, I had a commute.org meeting. They keep doing great stuff, uh, you know, with uh, carpools and shuttles. Clay and I were at the CCAG retreat. Um, there's a, a really good discussion on um, 101 corridor and having, uh, you know, expanding the 101 from Whipple up to 380. Of course, anything north of 380 is uh, problematic because of, of the, um, how the Highway 101 narrows and there aren't the auxiliary uh, lanes to expand from. Uh, there's a person who is a consultant for, um, I guess, the state assembly. Or his name is Tony Harris. He was also at the progress seminar that uh, Madison and I attended, and um, we we talked about sea level rise in 101 and and what is the state doing to address sea level rise um, affecting that 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 101 corridor because. You know, if the state is going to let 101 flood, then that's that's not good for us. Of course, that that's not going to happen. And so, um, Clay and I have been 
reaching out to various folks who um, are, are dealing with that, and hopefully we'll get some information that we can give to the full council on what Caltrans is doing uh, in regards to sea level rise uh, along the 101. And then um, I had mentioned this to Clay, and then I, I reached out to the mayor um, yesterday about it, and I, I've decided to host um, office hours. Um, so, um, you know, we got the letter from Beth Grossman. She had a very long list of, of questions, and, uh, you know, that was like the, the final motivator to make me do it. Um, and so, you know, besides the bailouts, we also have other issues, such as we discussed tonight. And, and so it's sometimes it's better, I think, um, at least for me, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Again, the Beth Grossman um, uh, email motivated me to do it. So uh, I'm going to work with staff. Uh, the next, the, the, the first meeting that I'd like to have is not this Wednesday, but I guess it's May 10th. And, you know, and, you know it's on a Wednesday, so City Hall stays open until 8. So it would be something, I don't know, like 5.30 to 7 or 6 to 7.30, something, you know, like a 90-minute um, time period. Maybe it's once a month or maybe it's every other month. I mean, every other uh, week, um, especially as we get into the Bayland um, uh, deliberations. So, so I, I'm going to call it coffee with Cliff. No, <laughs> say office so, hours. He won't even provide coffee. I'm just <laughs> okay, so I, I maybe my mind didn't track right on that. Um, coffee. Because so you're planning to have your own personal office hours here at the city hall where you're available to talk to people about whatever exactly okay mm -hmm. yeah that's good i have another we did affordable housing too okay um i just kind of hopped on to, to your guys's announcements but i remembered we also had affordable housing we were kind of just flushing out more of like what our vision is for affordable housing and it became clear that we kind of need to have an idea who we're trying like what demographic we're trying to serve obviously um everyone would have a need but is it you know workforce housing is it senior housing is it um tiny housing is it you know there's all these different things that we were discussing so um we did have somebody approach us regarding interest in tiny homes they're an organ nonprofit organization that works to build tiny homes and um the people who lead that organization actually live in Brisbane. They have a tiny home. It's under 200 square feet. Wow. So they had kind of talked with us about wanting to come and present to the council and then maybe even bring the tiny home and have it in the parking lot so that we could take a break. Maybe they could present first. We could take a, like a little break and everyone could go outside to look at it. So um, they weren't at our subcommittee meeting. But this was just kind of something Cliff and I were talking about, and I said it might be better later in the summer when it's a little bit lighter out that we could do that. So um, we were just really kind of more talking about identifying what our goals are and maybe pieces of property that would work for affordable housing and really who who it's for. So we were talking about um, something for, for teachers and the superintendent. Cliff had talked to the superintendent. He was really interested in having a conversation about what we could do for teachers in our community and um do you have anything to add cliff no I, I think you covered all the bases madison um you know affordable housing is a problem everywhere including brisbane and we want to make sure that we keep the diversity that we have in our town and if we don't you know provide affordable housing uh, you know we're, we're at risk of losing it yeah so. okay thank you I think that just about covers all the subcommittee reports. Thank you all. So let's move on to item D, City Council meeting schedule. And that will include the Baylands, which is the second page with the doodle poll results. So so are, are we saying on this the we have the possible meeting dates? Um, these are ones that we've decided on or that are already on our schedule 
These are ones that we collectively agreed on, right? Yeah. That so we were available. available. Let, let me just go through it. So we, as Clark indicated, we, at the subcommittee level, and that's the third column over proposed by Bayland subcommittee, those are the dates that they identified yesterday, subject to council approval. The rest of the dates are items or dates that you all listed that you were all available on the doodle poll. Um, they are not scheduled. That's subject to the council making a decision to schedule. And as Clark indicated, we w obviously would not be scheduling all of them. So, um, you know, it's kind of a conversation around how many, what, what, what kind of um, interval you'd like to have between meetings, I guess, is probably one way of looking at it. I mean, you want to have one meeting a week, one meeting every two weeks, um, however you guys want to handle it. Well, my suggestion is, um, personally, I would prefer to have the evening weekday meetings over the weekend daytime meetings. So Me I, would, I would prioritize the weekday evenings. Yeah, just with, with the one um, with caveat that, that the speaker series really of course is, yeah okay right but otherwise I, if, if we can make it all weekday evenings that would that would be best I so the speaker series you want on June 10th that's a recommendation yes we're, we're suggesting that um, Terry is is to have that before we get into deliberations and you know we felt that that would be uh, a better date to have it and staff thought that maybe we can get the speakers together for that that's about five weeks six weeks out okay and I reviewed the dates um, I, I did send an email to Clay saying that the 28th and 29th of June are no longer available for me in the evenings because I'm going to be what down dates? June 28th and 29th. I'm going to be down in Monterey for a 28th and 29th conference. Mm -hmm. okay. For a lead conference. Sorry, I, w w I had that, but w I thought so we had just crossed this out. We had <laughs> 28th and 29th of June. Okay. So Is there I'm any other feedback that people have? I, I have a question for Clay. Okay, sure. So, uh, Clay, when we were in our our Bayland subcommittee meeting, um, you were saying that, that we probably would need a meeting that first week of, of June, uh, and, or leaving that, these, these dates open just in case there was some spillover from the um, land use hearings? The, the land use and the community presentations. Okay. Yeah, I, the, the land use, I don't know. I mean, that we'll find out next Thursday how that goes. The, the community presentations seems almost assuredly to need a second night based would, on what we know right now. Yeah. We're going to do the first night on May 23rd, and it just doesn't look like we got enough time to get through everything that night. Okay. Um, you know, the this, this, this speaker series, you know, we don't have to study for that. Yeah. It's just, you know, you show up. I hope that all council members show up, but uh, you know, it's it's really just to you know educational purposes. Um, but we should keep these two dates open, this the seventh and the eighth, in case we need those dates for um, spillover. Okay. I think I, I'm. You know, if we're planning to have now that in, in the first two weeks of. June, that's having one, two, three, four, five meetings. Well, it's the first, the seventh, the eighth, the tenth, and the fifteenth. So That'll be on the first. first. Mm -hmm. June first. Okay, yeah, so we have a regular That's, meeting on the 1st and then a potential meeting either the 7th or the 8th. Or both. One or the well, either other. Or, or both. Or both. I mean, yeah, I mean, it just depends. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, if, if it happens and... It, it's it just, that out. it's getting, it's, it, that's compressing it pretty okay. tight, I think. What about like the 8th and the, ten, the 12th then? Well, and then we have another one on the 15th. Well, I, it, there's nothing magic about this calendar. So, I mean, if you... No, I know. I'm so just, I would say... Yeah, so if, I'm <laughs> trying to say that, you know, it's really difficult to have 
you know, that many meetings so in, in, in my world. Being responsive to that, uh, Terry, what you could do is just have one of those nights mm -hmm. and then push the second night, if we need it, out to the 15th, and then we would do the, the um, white paper perhaps a, a subsequent um, week after that. Because I understand the concern over having three meetings in one week. Okay. The the um, the presentations um, meeting that that again would not require the council to study, right? It's just going to be presentations from the developer, presentations from the community. The presentation night. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think that's probably generally true. Yeah, when they were done at the planning commission, there wasn't any study material ahead of time. Okay. So I guess when when would be the meeting when we would start actually having discussion? Well, we haven't even gotten there yet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily need to read for the sixth or the eighth, right? Because all your reading should have been <coughs> done for mm -hmm. yeah land you, use balance hearing number one. Right. You 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 wouldn't necessarily have to read for the seventh or the eighth. You you do already have the white paper, um, so that's in your possession. That there may be some additional information, but that will be the bulk of that evening. I I, I understand that it's not just the work that we put in at the actual council meeting or the time that you put in at the actual council meeting. That many of the meetings require, you know, reading and. And reviewing materials that, it, you know, but when, you know, particularly for me, um, when I have a full eight-hour day um, and you add in your travel time and actually getting a few hours rest and eating, it, it makes where, you know, having back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back meetings very difficult and then there's other meetings that you need to add in for our other um, how many meeting how many meetings a week do you think you would be willing to do it sounds like three five in one week or five in two weeks sounds like, like too much for you so what do you think well that's basically every other day you know but, when you well, break you it down to work days so. what do you think wor like works I, I'm just with? I'm just saying that I think we're trying to condense this um, quite a bit. If I can make a suggestion, and, and Clay, you know, let me know if this potentially works. So, say we chose Wednesday the seventh as the spillover date, and then um, didn't do the speaker series on the tenth, but actually moved that to the seventeenth, and then did the community and applicants uh, presentations on the 12th um, because we, we've knocked out um, Wednesday, <coughs> Thursday, the 28th and the 29th. Perhaps we could do the white paper on, on, on a Saturday, say the 24th. So what about May, May 23rd? I thought that was when we were doing the like, community presentations. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I only read the top. I only read hearings. You turn your microphone on, Clay. That way, I'm not, I'm not responsible for what I say. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy if we take off either the June seventh or eighth, one of the two, and I don't care which one. Yeah. Is that weird, though, to do, like, let's say we do, we're going to discuss land use, right, next week, right? Mm -hmm. And then doesn't it make sense that the next following meeting would be a continuation of that? Because as this is written, we would have land use, and then we would have community presentations, and then we would have spillover from land use, potentially, and then we would have spillover from community presentations doesn't it make sense to have them grouped like land yeah, use it, it, concern, one and then it, do the it, other it, yeah it, yeah yeah i mean it, yes i would say so um but the concern is that we're trying to schedule the community groups 
and they keep moving the dates on them. So, I mean, if you want to move them off into June, that's fine, but let's just pick a date that we, that we say is going to be the date. And if you want them to use the 23rd as a spillover on the land use, that's assuming that we need that. I don't, I, I don't know for sure that you're going to, but you may or may not. Yeah. See, that's why we're, I mean, it's... It's, it's a tricky situation. Yeah, and I think the, the community presentations is just important that we pick a date and stick to it so that we have consistency with the people who are going to make presentations. <coughs> yeah, I kind of yeah. agree with Madison. Like, having the land use broken up, you know, May 4th to May 23rd is a long period of time, and then having to wait until June to go back to land use, it would be good to have it all. If we're going to get through a topic, just get through a topic and then move on. Okay, just Sorry. pick a date for the for the community <laughs> presentations then. I am just also would need to make sure still that, like, if we're going to do a, a Baylands land use hearing number two on the 23rd, I would still need it to be starting at 6.30 like we had planned. Because would, we wouldn't need a study session before that one, right? Because it would if be a spillover. It's a continuation, over. yeah. Six. Let me, on the twenty third, let me ask everybody this. Uh, let me. Oh, ask it's this. of May. Let me ask a question: Can can everybody do subsequent Saturdays like the tenth and the seventeenth? I can. I'm asking. You mean two Saturdays? Two Saturdays. What, what would we on those two Saturdays? Well, I'm asking first if you can do Saturday. What I'm <laughs> suggesting is um, we do Thursday the eighth or Wednesday the 7th for either the land use or Baylands application. And then if needed, then on Saturday the 10th, we do the rest of it. But, you know, I think we can work it out with only doing one, one weekend, Clark. So if, if, um, if the 4th was, okay, is land use, and then the 23rd was slated for for land use i i got a feeling that that's going to be a two meeting 23rd of what, what 23rd of may it's not oh here. yeah it's going to be two meetings um and and then and then have um say june 7th then or the 8th be the the presentations and um do i think we'll need well if they meetings? don't finish then what then and then have uh, June twelfth uh, be the spillover for the presentations. You want to finish it on Saturday? You want to do it on a Monday? Yeah, I mean, I, I there's I think there's a good chance we could finish the presentations. I mean, it, we'll know how many we need, and instead of having so the you're at I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really care because all these dates I agreed to. Yeah, and it's like you know, if I start talking, it's just throwing another thing. So. You guys decide what you want. <laughs> yeah, we'll minimize the weekends. Okay. I mean, yeah, and then and then and then keep um, <laughs> then keep the seventeenth yeah, as the workshop, and then this is what makes me nuts. You know, it's like I can get up and go home. And tell me what the schedule is because right. I, I don't. And, and that's what I'm going to say too. But I I have <coughs> difficulty, you know, working twenty hours a day. No, I get that. And too. doing it three days in the week. <laughs> and I mean, I, I I think that the public is going to have problems with that too. And, and I think that if we need to go longer and we end up going further down the calendar, so we're into August or we're into September, then then we need to do it. <coughs> but I don't think we should try to kill ourselves well, to well, condense the, the case, schedule. I mean, I mean, we shouldn't plan on taking August off. No, I don't think we should. Yeah. I mean, we should work through this until, you know, until we until we're done. You know, yeah. get her done. All right. Until the fat lady sings. Can I make a recommendation then? Please. Okay, so... May fourth will be the the um, uh, the uh, land use uh, hearing. May twenty third will be the spillover for the land use hearings. Uh, Starting at six thirty. Right. Yeah. And then we could do uh, uh, June seventh. And, and depending upon how many presentations there are, maybe we start it at, at six o'clock with presentations. Yeah. From the community. June seventh. June seventh. And then, uh, and then go back to the workshop on the tenth on Saturday, and then we could do the white paper on on the nineteenth. I think that makes sense to 
start the um, community presentations earlier. So hopefully we can like bang it all out in one night and yeah. not. Now, if you so, say we didn't, say we needed that extra one, you could use the uh, the 12th, the 14th, or the 15th if yeah, you needed just, it. Just schedule a date for a spillover because you may not be able to get them all in. You know, we'll hope. I mean, if we start at six, hopefully. Okay. Spill. How, how about finish by two in the morning? The presentation we, spillover on the 19th. Spillover. I don't even know I what's mean, happening anywhere. Thing, excuse me, June 15th. June 15th spillover. So we have June 1st, June 7th, June 15th. June 7th for the presentations. June 1st. June 7th regular. and June 15th. And June 10th. June 10th would be the workshop. So June 1st, 7th, 10th, and 15th. Yeah, that's no, the meeting. No, I think you said the 19th, didn't you, Cliff? And the 19th for the... Um, white paper white presentation. Okay, my my laptop died, but I'm trying to add these in here, and it's looking like a lot of meetings in that 10 days. Okay, so... June 7th, June 10th. So the first... 15th. Is one week. Yes. And regular then... Regular meeting. That's a regular... Yeah, it's, it's one... It's like... It's one week, though. And then the next week would be the 7th and the 10th. So you have one meeting one week, two meetings the next week, and yeah, then and you the have... Second meeting's optional. And then the f on the 15th... The 19th. Is one meeting the week of the 15th, so that's one meeting, two meetings, one yeah, meeting. Yeah, that would yeah, be a spillover one. We might right. not need it. And then the 19th... Would be the white paper. So it's really... Too bad. So it's no one meeting, week. two meetings, one meeting, one meeting... So we're taking the, okay, on this paper where it says June hyphen July 31st. Yes. Yeah. That's not really a date. Wait, what, what do you? Wait, which? On this one. The, oh, I was not looking at that. I think we're looking at this one. Well, no, it says, June's it one says, of July. It's got to merge. As to be that determined. Yeah. To be determined. That's just the so that's not a meeting. Right. No, no, no. That's a range. A date. That's a range. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. I'm just wanting to make sure because my laptop died. Okay. So June first, June seventh, June tenth, June fifteenth, and June nineteenth. Right. Well, the way those play out with the weeks that they're in. Doesn't seem too bad. Are there any other regular ske scheduled council? I can't find that other paper. It's on the other side. Right oh. here. We only have white paper in June. And it's the first. Okay, the so first. Your, your is, council meetings is, uh, would be regular. June. Your, yeah. your council meetings would be June first, not then again until July twentieth. Yeah. Okay. And then the rest are in August. Yeah. I think it's manageable. I mean, to me, because it's. The week of the 29th through the 3rd um, is one meeting. Mm -hmm. And then the week of the 5th through the 9th, or the 10th, is one meeting. Or two meetings. Yeah, that's no more than two meetings. Yeah, and, and, then, and then when you look at the meetings from June 7th through uh, June 19th, there's only one where we would be discussing things, right? So you have to prepare. The other ones were just there to... Be formative. You know, Listen. Getting information. Yes. We're listening to the public and the applicant and then the guest speakers. Okay. It's just, it's just putting in the, the time. Okay. So can staff send us a new list? We certainly will. Okay, good. Cause and, and then I know that the community and actually a couple people have brought up um, when cumulative impacts are going to be discussed and where would we put that in in the schedule cumulative impacts have been discussed through every section of the um, you know those are topical issues cumulative impacts related to traffic cumulative impacts related to air quality etc so you wouldn't pull them out separately I mean that wasn't part of the original schedule or programming if 
the council has questions about cumulative impacts beyond what's in the EIR in the presentations, you should probably add that to your list of well, questions. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. So is everyone on board with that? Yeah, I'm just putting it all on my calendar right yeah. now. So don't forget. wait for staff so, to email it. <laughs> so we're we're this is June we're scheduling right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. June only. So June 1st, the 7th, the 10th, and the 19th. What about 15th? And the 15th. White president, huh? The 15th. 15th is, is first, the 7th, 10th, 15th, huh? 19th. If we need it. 15th is a, a, a date that we're going to the tenth, block out. The 10th is the Bayland Speaker Series. That is correct. And the 15th is, uh, we're blocking it out just in case there's spillover from the presentations. Flow over, yeah. potential. Yes. So it could be be potentially the fifteenth, and definitely the nineteenth. Yes. Which is Monday. Mm -hmm. So we have the June first for <laughs> sure, June seventh. Maybe. Probably for sure. June 10th for sure for the speaker series. Potentially June 15th and June 19th for sure. Right? Correct. One, two, three, four, five. Five meetings in June. Yes. Heck. And one is all day. Get two weeks off. <laughs> Uh -huh. And one is all day. Optional for council members. I know. I know. I'll. I'll be there, and Cliff will be there. You know, uh, this is for the public, but you know, I think it's probably probably good for us too. Will it be videotaped? I was just going to ask that. <laughs> yeah. We'll yeah. You can, yeah. It'll we'll be tent. video. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, tent. we'll I'm sure we'll do it in this room. Yeah. And we'll, we'll Try to videotape it. Okay. Although I think it's important for like the optics, you know, if all there are four council members there and one not, you know, I think like the community's probably expecting us all to come. Like it's optional, but not really optional. Well, That's how I think. I don't think it's everyone up showed up to the sustainability one. Yeah. That was optional. How many were there? Two, three. Three of us. Council three? for prom. There was something. No, no, it was three. Only three. <coughs> Yeah. Okay, well, okay. it's okay. everyone's own choice. Okay. So are we moving on to July or we're not scheduling no, that I yet? I don't think we can. I think, I think on the 19th we'll probably look at that. Yes. The, yeah, I, the only thing I'd want to point out, just, you know, unless you want to do it differently, we were going to cancel the July 6th meeting, which is the, for the July weekend or week. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So then you, your regular be meeting would be July 20th. Yes. What, you think it's some kind of American holiday or something? <laughs> so I hear. Oh. <laughs> An extra long holiday. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's canceled. Okay. So moving on to written communications. Okay. So I want to acknowledge the non baylands related written correspondence that has been received between March 2nd and April 27th, 2017. We received a correspondence on April 2nd from Camelia Vladmirova. We received correspondence on April 24th from Barbara Ebel and on April 27th from Don Cutler. Oral communications number two. Is can I can I ask a question of sure. staff, perhaps? Okay. Um, during the um, so tired. cleanup, Earth Day cleanup that we did, um, it had me looking at the hill that was in part of the negotiations um, across from Mission Blue that is supposed to come back to the state and county park and when that might happen because that was tied with the development of the additional housing on the Northeast Ridge 
and I was wondering if in some future point the staff could come back with a report on what the status of that is. Yeah, it, it's it actually a, a county parks decision, um, but I'll get you the uh, projected timeline on that. Mostly because I know that it is, you know, habitat that's very quickly degrading and that we know that the groups would like to get up there on, on the mountain to do the restoration and if we could find out when that might be possible, that, um, that'd be great. Oral communications number two. Is there anyone who'd like to speak? No. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. We are adjourned.